Good morning, good morning. It's Sunday. I'm going to say it right now. Hit that freaking like button so that we can uh, get one more person to watch this video. It's pretty interesting. I just saw yesterday. Oh, look who decided to get out of bed. What's up, Scott? The good thing that you got out of bed, because I'm sure Colin's got some more Rick rolling for us. Um, I saw yesterday on YouTube that uh, it seems like this is kind of maybe it's a New Year thing that like policy that YouTube put in. But there are a lot of big names that uh, have posted videos. Um, there's this. Uh, oh, what's the one I'm looking for? Uh, Snot nosed little punk, which is from uh, which movie? Point Break. Snot nosed little punk. There's a snot-nosed little punk uh, named David Pakman, who's like this uh, progressive slash liberal commentator. Um, there's another one, um, Kyle Kalinske. I don't know if anybody watches this. Um, and these are uh, people that have quite a, you know, over a million followers and they post. And like, I think this is like their life. Part of this is their life is to like do political commentary and stuff like that. It just, it popped up. I don't know why it popped up on my feed, but they are... Um, complaining about getting completely annihilated on youtube like they uh, david was talking about how he had you know 1.2 million followers and on a bad video that they put out they would still get like 14,000 views or whatever and for the last like since january 8th or something like that they've gotten 1,000 views or 2,000 views on their videos <laughs> so maybe i should feel uh a little bit better that uh you know we don't have to worry about that. Thank goodness I'm not making um, <clears throat> any money off of that situation, like the ads and stuff like that, which I think I'm going to make a video about how uh, people on YouTube to me just don't make any sense because everyone's worried about views and everyone's worried about subscribers and not that I'm we're making money a lot here, but like there's what's what's the point of going through YouTube to make money? when you could just tell people to send money to your PayPal account like I do. Like, I thought that was just a normal thing, but I don't see anybody else doing it. Um, so to me, it's kind of weird <laughs> that people don't just cut YouTube out of the situation and just say, hey, just send me money to my Ash app or something like that and just forget about views and stuff like that. And it, could you imagine if that happened um, for people who had like 1.2 million views? They wouldn't have to pay YouTube anything. They wouldn't. Maybe I, should, maybe I shouldn't be saying this because YouTube's going to be listening to it. But anyway, I do think it's funny. Yeah, but Patreon too. You, Patreon gets a cut of what you do. That's that's how they make their business. But PayPal doesn't make any money off of you sending me money. Do they? I don't think so. I, I don't see anything that says taxed or anything like that. I mean, there is a tax if it's across like countries. But if it's here... Um, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense for people to go through these third party sources that just use you to make money, <laughs> just to have people send you money. This is one of the things I liked about Craigslist is Craigslist removed the middleman. It was free to post ads and you didn't have to pay anybody, but now Facebook marketplace or whatever has taken over Craigslist and Craigslist is dumb and nobody uses it anymore. So now Facebook has just erased the middleman or the non-middleman and they've become the middleman and now people have to pay Facebook Marketplace to sell stuff and it's not even as good as Craigslist in the first place. So <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe I don't know something, but to me, it's just common sense that you would, um, yeah, not use a middleman and pay somebody just to do what? What do they do? Uh, anyway, um... Yeah, but I'll read your. I can't read your comments because and I'll, maybe you guys have some ideas that I'm missing, which is probably true. Um, anyway, that's enough of that. So it looks like YouTube has done an overhaul and it's just ripping people off completely. Like I feel like YouTube has gotten so big, like most companies do, that they just don't give a shit anymore about people getting screwed over and uh, them screwing people over. So I think it's just a matter of time before YouTube is replaced by some other big corporate that will become big that's like a platform like this because youtube feel like i feel like they're calling to have people leave their platform because they just keep doing this to people 
Um, all right, so let's uh, get into this Rick Rolled set. I'm sure that's what's going to happen. Um, it seems like, um, <clears throat> yeah, it seems like Colin is good with these playlists and sets that uh, help us to be uh, surprised. And uh, we'll see what he comes up with today to uh, surprise us. If anything, does it mean I don't want to put the pressure on Colin that you have to do that every time? But you've you've had like the last like six sets of yours that uh, have been pretty uh, creative. So here's what Colin says. Colin says, uh, hey, folks, and hey, Cap. Also, blimey. Blimey. <laughs> Diversity is the theme of today's set. My goal for this set is to not have two songs that sound alike. Well, that's interesting. You certainly are not going to be able to go into speed metal because uh, power metal and speed metal all sound alike. Like a lot of other stuff. So this will be an interesting feat to see if you can pull this off, Colin. There should be a little something for everyone today, is what he says. So this first song is fucking long. <laughs> well, it's not that long. Beyond Twilight. And the song name is The Devil's Hall of Fame. Well, that sounds like an interesting title. So does Doom and Power Metal work as a combo? We are about to find out. Beyond Twilight was a band from 2001 to 2008. And was helmed by a person who some here might be familiar with Finn Zierler Zeiler Zierler we've I, we've had him or had some of his more modern music here on the channel yes we have but Beyond Twilight is where I think his creative peak was the Devil's Hall of Fame has a doom metal foundation atmospheric with a low tempo I love low tempo so how so it's power metal with low tempo that seems to be an oxymoron but anyway the power metal side okay comes from the vocals performed by Jorn Land, pronounced Jorn Landa. Okay. Now, don't think high vocals with this guy. He is like a more soulful Russell Allen. How can I don't think you can get more soulful than Russell Allen, but anyway. And pretty damn equal in terms of power. That's a feat. That's a feat. We're going to find out. So, this is Beyond Twilight, the Devil's Hall of Fame. Here we go with song number one Roll. Rick Roll. Okay, it's not a Rick Roll. Turn it up, I think I'm gonna turn it up. Is it gonna get like crazy loud in my head? I just turned it up quite a bit. Okay, I'm digging this so far. Pretty cool so far. Lost in the dark without angels to guide me. Yes. Hands of death reaching out for me. I'm digging it so far. I see myself moving. I, I can see what you're saying about the uh, like powerful, soulful voice. I wouldn't say it's more soulful than Sir Russell, but it's it's good. I like that higher pitch thing. Uh. I'm just wondering if it's gonna go somewhere. It seems like it's staying here. And I like it, but I would like to hear a little more. Remember I said back and forth? Like, Full-time, half-time, full-time, half-time. 
Ferreira. Baggins, I'm not doing it for money. That's not my reason for doing it. I just read that. But, I do think that it's acceptable to charge at this point. Ooh, I like that. Dude, so far I'm digging it. I do wish, uh, I can't believe I'm asking for this, but I wish it would pick up a little bit. John, I just read your uh, your comment about this is like metal haunted house. <laughs> that is a great way to fucking characterize this. I like it, but I'm again, I'm I do feel like it could play in the background of a uh, Halloween night when kids are getting trick or treating. Notice the left part of the cover because you said that. I totally would have missed it. I focused on the eye. <laughs> Woo, got some boobies. Can we get in trouble for that? I think John Feeney's characterization of the song is the best so far. <laughs> Yeah, I, okay, so, yeah, I, I know what I'm going to say about what I think about the song, unless it completely changes. Listen to Baggins already, like, thinking about sex. Is that what you think about Baggins? Oh, we haven't done a question of the day. I've totally forgotten about that. I need to, I need to make that more of a thing. Uh, sorry, Ivy. Tell Jason to cook you some dinner first. In the other room. Oh, oh gosh. Listen, listen to Baggins' question of the day. You guys thought I was over the top. Baggins is like... Baggins is ready to tell all the dark secrets. You know JBB ain't answering that question, Baggins. She conspicuously disappears from the chat. Yeah, maybe Alexis. <laughs> I'm 
except I was one of the worst ones when it came to showers. I said like every other day, three times a week. Yeah, I'm definitely bored with the song. This is so long. This is too long for a song that's this tempo. It doesn't change. Oh, we got a new person in the chat. Caesar. Caesar? Caesar? Is that it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. At the very beginning, I was totally digging it. But, and I guess that would fit the Doom metal feel. Uh, but eight minutes of that is just way too long. Remember when I talked about anything over like seven minutes or eight minutes, you got to kind of justify why it's more than that. Well, I would say for this kind of music, anything over four minutes or five minutes, you have to justify. And so that extra three minutes was just way too long for this kind of music. Uh, I like the music itself. I thought his singing was really good. Uh, but there's just no change. I mean, I think no change. At least kind of like a pick-me-up and then go back to that would be acceptable, in my opinion. But to just have it like... Dun, 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 for eight minutes? <laughs> uh, just a little too long there. Um, yeah, I think it was good idea just not executed very well as far as length and you got to have some sort of change up in my opinion um whether it's high tempo or fast or low tempo slow it's i think very beneficial in a song to have some mix up mix and match um yeah so that's my thoughts on that let's get to the second question but i'm gonna change i think I think we'll uh, not do that question of the day today, Baggins. We'll, we'll wait for another year for that question. <laughs> but I appreciate the uh, the attempt and the uh, exuberance to find out how much people masturbate in a day. Um, let's say... Um, what would be a good question? Good question. Um, who are you closer to? Who do you feel more connected to, your mom or your dad? I'd be very interested in that. Who do you feel more connected to, your mom or your dad? I definitely feel more connected to my dad. My mom and I do not have a good relationship, nor have we really ever had a good relationship. And to this point, we don't have a relationship for the last, I don't know, decade or so. Um, so definitely my dad. <clears throat> dad was a kick-ass dad in a stereotypical world where when parents divorce the mom usually is the good one and the dad kind of is the uh lame one completely reversed in my situation my dad was always there always provided always took care of us so all right let's get to the next one and i'll read your comments to see what you guys say about that question of the day a little deep but not too deep not certainly not you know too invasive of um how much you masturbate today but i appreciate it baggins all right, number two. How the fuck do you pronunciate this name? <clears throat> Aphenummer? Aphenummer? Oh my god, there's no way I can pronunciate it. Dude, if you're gonna give me this, Colin, you gotta like put in parentheses like how to pronunciate it. The song is called The Sovereign. So this song is basically the inverse of the last song. Okay, so it's gonna be like really fast and only fast. Has a power metal bass. It has a lot of atmosphere. From the orchestration and growls. Now, growls isn't something I normally go for, okay? But for some reason, I'm fine with these, and I cannot explain why. He says, no F, F M and number whatever. No effing clue how to pronounce. Okay, thank you for saying that, because I'm not the only retard who doesn't know how to say it. Are a French symphonic melodic death metal band. Okay, wait. Symphonic melodic death metal band. Who comes up with these freaking genres? Just call it metal or 
whatever. At least only have one adjective to describe it, not four. <laughs> what a label that is. Yes, it is. Exactly, Colin. This one's for your more extreme metal fans. Okay, that'll be like, what, Ash and Scott K. Also, I chose the lyric video for those who want to know what the heck they are singing about. Uh, if you can't understand it, that means it's probably going to be growls I don't enjoy. But nonetheless, here is Afanamur. <laughs> the Sovereign. Here we go. symphonic part of it. Definitely more energy. What up, dubs? <laughs> Adrian comes in it's like this. Is nice. 
Yeah, I can hear the guitar playing comments good. And I, I actually like the symphonic sound of the keyboard too. I just wish the tempo would change the ha I mean, not, you don't even have to change 4-4, four, four, just to change the subdivision of it. Oh, of course Scott likes this. Ooh, Alexa says she likes one. Jason likes one better, too. The split. Interesting. And that is the end of that. All right. So, yeah, that pretty much was the tails of the heads of the coin. I think really the only thing to divide whether you like one or two better is if you tend to like lower tempo or higher tempo. So for me, I'm going to say you guys all know what I'm going to pick when it comes to tempo. If I had to choose, it's really hard because I would put one over two. But the caveat to that is at least two was like three minutes shorter than one which could make that kind of go back because eight minutes is really long to be just repeating the same thing over and over again so ah i might take that back i'm gonna say two over one because it is <laughs> that extra three minutes is just just really draggy so adrian likes those growls um again when it comes to growls i don't dislike them necessarily but they didn't add to the song for me um, especially with just, I think I'm more concerned about the same tempo da, 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 all the way through. All right, let's get to number three. Number three is Secret Sphere. I've never, have we heard of these guys? And the song is called Commitment. This one's for the instrumental fans. Okay, Secret Sphere are an Italian prog metal band and somehow stayed pretty under the radar for 25 years. Commitment is an instrumental from their 2017 concept album, The Nature of Time. It comes towards the end of the album, and without going too much into the story, this track is a summation of all the previous songs, like meaning themes musically, and they kind of put it all together, kind of like a concept album would, or you just mean like, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm guessing it is. So if you like this song, good chance you'll like the album too. The end of the song leads into the epic of the album, so once you start hearing children playing, you can end the song. Okay, so once I start hearing children playing, I can hear, I can stop the song. All right, so here we go with Secret Sphere, and the song is called Commitment. Nice. I go on a playlist, I'm already calling it, motherfuckers. Mm. Hell yeah! This song is sick! This is like a great driving tune. Yeah, uh, Colin, I'm beginning to be suspect because this could have some dream theater slash cake and vibes to it. I'm 
ambitious, Colin. I think you're like Adrian is with Dream Theater. You just have this like block that you can't get by. And it has nothing to do with the band. It's your fucking issue. Dude, this is sick. It's not as good as Arch Echo, but this is sick. that Kelly is stuck around for uh, most of the, the set so far. I hope you can stay for the whole thing, Kelly. It's nice to get some uh, estrogen in the room, along with uh, Ashley and Ivy and Alexis. Assuming that they're all female. Because I think they are. Oh, there's the kids. There's the kids. That was a short fucking song. All right. That was a very short song. That Was that three minutes? Um, definitely putting that on a playlist. Um, what's up, Anguish? Yeah, I like that it's short, and which, you know, for a lot of people, instrumentals, if it's tough for you, it being short is a good thing. Um, <clears throat> I did, I, I've always said this, even with instrumentals, I feel like there should be a theme or a home base, which is why Yetse Jam is so good. Um, is it just has that bass and then you go off and do things and then come back to the bass. Um, but it didn't really have that would be my only kind of critique of a negative thing for it. But the fact that it was so short makes it good for me. Um, so yeah, definitely best uh, song of the set so far for me. Which reminds me because I was hearing the guitar player doing some cool stuff in there. I just saw uh, John Petrucci popped up and announced yesterday for all you guitar players, which would be like David and... Drew, which by the way, where's Drew at? Drew should be in the freaking chat. Um, Petrucci announced his, um, I think his JP, uh, whatever, I don't know what the actual title of it is, but it's his JP universe, I think is what it is. And it's number, I think it's the fourth one they've done. And this one is going to be in Florida. And uh, he announced the people who were going to be at this thing. Man, I wish I had the money to go. Because it's Florida, number one. The problem is it's in August, which is like, you don't want to go to Florida in August. You want to go in like like now. But he announced the, the lineup and Pliny, uh, Tosin Abasi, has been going every year. So he's coming back and there's a couple other people who are coming back. Uh, but Pliny, he said, is going to be there. And guess what? Tim Henson is going to be there. So I'm sure he invited him so he could get the uh, kind of percussive slash uh, tapping kind of feel. Uh, I think on his first one, he had uh, Andy McKee. And An Andy McKee is one of the old, old style kind of first ones that did the kind of tapping, hitting acoustic style. And Tim Henson and uh, his, I can't, I can't, Sam, Sam is his name, I think, his his best friend guitarist that's also in uh, Polyphia. He's invited as well. And then Zach Wilde is going to be there. I always wonder, like, Zach Wilde just seems like the kind of guy that, like, everyone would be walking on eggshells around. Like, he seems like, again, I have no idea, and I'm not assuming, I'm just saying what I feel. is like, it seems like he's always drunk, and he's like an alcoholic that could go off at any moment, just kick the shit out of you. Uh, may, but it seems like a lot of people like him, including Mike Portnoy and, uh, obviously, John Petrucci. So, I think it's interesting that he's he's like one of the main guys that they announced at the lineup um so anyway it looks like dude that would be a freaking awesome set they had guthrie govin last year he didn't appear to be on it so i wonder why he's not coming back because i think he's probably one of the most popular guitarists right now um so yeah but interesting enough he's not coming back this year but anyway, if you are a guitar player and that's something you're interested in, go to Florida because, I, I mean, it's like a week, uh, week long or weekend long, I don't know, of just like a bunch of guitar. It says you could be a beginner. It says you don't even have to play guitar because you could just go and they do performances every night. So imagine just hanging out on the beach, going, doing what you're going to do, and then at night just hearing all these freaking great, wonderful players. Dude, I, I, I'm going to look it up, and I would just love to – just go and just be an observer and not really necessarily do guitar stuff, but damn, uh, 
yeah so go look that up if you guys are interested in that uh guthrie is not going to be there unfortunately but uh a bunch of other great guitars are going to be there i'll be interested to see if tim henson because he's like a weird dude actually a lot of really like awesome um guitar players are kind of weird socially i wonder if he's a good teacher though because just because you can do something doesn't mean you can teach it well and this is kind of like a lot of teaching as well as playing um so he's probably gonna be awkward at that i would love just to sit back and be a, a fly on the wall to see how you know like weird he is all right number four here we go this is harmony and the song is called you are Perfect time for a ballad after the last song. You Are is a very straightforward track that doesn't hold too many surprises. However, we have Daniel Hyman. Yes, if he sings like he does on, um, uh, you know, the uh, Earthside song, I'm going to be very happy. Uh, and this song is all about his voice and how it builds throughout the song, starting low and somber for a few minutes before his tradition or tra transitions into a high, his higher range and his transition gives me chills every time I hear it. It's so good. Okay, it sounds like it's going to be a, you know, dream of static. And if it is, I'm going to be freaking happy. Harmony, you are. Here we go. One, two, three. Anybody else heard this song? Yeah, what's up, Drew? All of a sudden, you just heard me talking about you. I try to walk a path where I belong. I try to find out what is right and what is wrong. I try to walk the path you want me to. Please watch my steps, please. Guide me through. Good voice so far. See me. See how I try. In tears and in shame. Hear me. Hear when I cry. Cry out your name. Remember, if it's the Daniel Hyman I'm thinking of. 
it being kind of like power metal y, but in this power metal feel like he sounds like I imagined him to sound. He sounds really good in this. That was beautiful. Remind me to talk about Ben. Michael Herman and I were talking about that a couple weeks ago. A week ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know, I can hear that at the end of that last thing. That vibrato. But I also... I think this is beautiful. This is fucking going on the playlist for sure. Not on the chair playlist. But... Is he the one who sings Chosen One? I might get him mixed up with somebody else too. You're here to catch me when I fall. Oh, it's Damien. Okay. Yeah. All these fucking singers. I hear a fade out. Right, faux show. That song is definitely going on a, yeah, definitely going on a playlist. Um, but not the gym playlist. Uh, so yeah, I don't like it as much as the instrumental. I still like the instrumental, but that was that was really really good. John, why are you against fade outs? <clears throat> it's either that or <laughs> they're both like you over. It's like kind of the only way you can end a song. <laughs> um. All right, so yeah, I think that three and four right now are taking the cake, and two and one are just eh. Won't put those on playlists as of now, unless I listen to them on my second listen and change my mind. But as of now, yeah. All right, let's get to the next one, which is called Shadows Past is the band name, and the song is called Impressed. All righty, time for Power Metal. Shadows Past is a power metal band with some very light progressive elements. This band features the Lindroth brothers who would go on to form Dimov. I love that. This is pretty straightforward power metal with Ola. 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 It looks like Ole, but it's, he says it's pronounced Ola, I believe. On drums rivaling Achilles Priester. Okay. In terms of endurance and creativity. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't see Achilles Priester as being really creative. I see him definitely endurance and just, um, just powerful. But I don't see him as creative, really. But part of it's because the music he plays with is not really apt for creativity on drums. It's just kind of like... Anyway, there is one, one part of the song that I'm a bit mixed on. Okay, after the keyboard solo, which is very clearly influenced by Stradivarius by phrasing and even tone, the singer growls a few words for no apparent reason. No, uh, on one hand, it's a curious creative decision. On the other, I just have to ask why. <laughs> All right, I'm glad you set us up for that because now I'm going to be honed in on it and listening for it. So here's Shadow, Shadow's Past with Impressed. All right. Yeah, it's totally Kyo's freezer style. <laughs> I didn't 
say abrupt endings, but the that's how you either bat or fade out. Get to the balance. You can't do tricep, the biggest muscle of your arm. You come in, you can't do tricep. You gotta push that shit out and make it burn. I don't think I've ever heard low tempo with Neil Priester Colin. <laughs> so maybe I do, but it's mostly this. Why is this rough, you cover? I think this is pretty much all power metal. Well, that was kind of cool. In the two different years. Kelly's got this first. Sasha's got a first, of course. <laughs> that was kind of cool. Yeah, I'm gonna say the solo is my favorite part of the song so far. Mostly because of the solos, I put that directly in the middle. Uh, I still like it more than two and one uh, because it, at least, even though it was power metal, the solos kind of made it a little bit more interesting, I guess, than two and one for me. Um, man, Jason has got that first. Maybe Jason has a, is a power metal dude like. Sasha and Colin, maybe you have a third. Maybe you guys are the three musketeers when it comes to power metal. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to usually say Colin has um, traditionally left his last song to be the Rickroll of the set or kind of like the surprise. So I don't know what's going to happen here, as do you not know either, peoples of the chat. Um, let's see what he's going to say, and then I'm sure when I turn on the video, it might be a little bit different, but let's find out. He says, <clears throat> okay, this, this is another eight minute song, according to what he says. Uh, this band is called Lalu, which we've had on this, uh, channel quite mm, several times, and I like them. I think they're good. French band, right? If I'm not correct, tell me. 
Um, the song is called Paint the Sky. He says, and we finish up with Lalu. Paint the Sky is the quintessential hodgepodge song just from the amount of contributing musicians to this track. And I will list them now. Vivian Lalu is the main composer and keyboards. Damian Wilson is on vocals, which, okay. So I always get Damian and the Daniels mixed up. Jelly Cardarelli. <laughs> That's not a serious name, right? That's a joke. Jelly Cartarelli. Jelly Cartarelli. Jelly Cartarelli. Jelly Cartarelli. I just got it. Sorry. Um, and the next one is called, is it Joop, Joop Walters on guitar? Or is it Joop, Joop Walters? J-O-O-P. <laughs> Dude, these names are fantastic. Tony Franklin on bass. Alessandro Del Vecchio, Vecchio on keyboards. Steven Walsh from Kansas, keyboards and guest vocals. Holy crap. Jens Johansson, Stradivarius on keyboards and leads. And Gary Workamp from Shadow Gallery on the guitar solo. Wow. That's all, that's, all those people are like contributing to this song. It's kind of crazy. Um, I'm sorry, but Jelly Cartarelli is going to take the name of any fucking band member of all time. Jelly Cartarelli. I remember I thought that, um, yeah, I, that, that's the, the best name ever. So yeah, quite the lineup. Now this song goes in many different directions and it's pretty difficult to describe. There's a strong 70s prog and jazz feel. Okay. One thing I have to talk about is Jen's keyboard solos. The first is pretty typical fast runs, but the second has a more blues jazz feel. And even though he is still using his signature power metal patch, it sounds fantastic. All right, I will listen to that. That's it for my set. I truly hope there was something for everyone here as that's the theme. If not, well, sorry, not sorry, I guess. But I'm still a little uh, apprehensive about pushing play because it might not be Lalu and be some fucking crazy thing. Because Colin, I like that you've got us on our... You've done enough, at least, to get us on our heels that maybe you're pulling our wieners here, our chain. Huh. All right, so here we go with maybe Lalu paint the sky. Let's do it. Very, um, what's his name? Tim played with, um, Dave Matthews on that. Tim Reynolds. Sounded very Tim Reynolds there. I like the bass in the background. I'm 
digging this. Just like a lot of other Lalu songs, I think, man, there are... I know this is a collaboration, but still, this is good. A lot of interesting aspects to it. Yeah, Ryan, I can hear the Rush kind of feel, too. Yeah, this is just kind of like a... Damn, the drummer is kicking. Jelly Pirelli is kicking. like this, it's definitely going on the playlist for show. This is great. That's my final list. 
put that I think that beat the ballad just a little bit because I did like the eclectic nature of it the going off doing some cool solos the groove of it was really good it felt <clears throat> even though I don't know it was what seven or eight minutes I felt like it deserved to be seven or eight minutes because it just flowed very well um so yeah definitely like that song definitely going on a playlist uh I did want to say because it happened in this song as well but it reminded me in the last song that I never talked about was um Ben's so Michael Herman and I have had we're talking about this he sent me a video of some hot chick playing a solo and she was cute um but I noticed you know as good as her guitar skills were uh her like when she would bend a note uh, a couple of times she would be like flat a little bit and it reminded me just how much um bending notes especially if you're bending a lot uh, is such an art in of itself of the guitar playing world that a lot of people take for granted and don't notice when people are incredibly better at it than others. And I said, I think it's a hidden gem of John Petrucci that a lot of people don't even think about. But his bending skills are just fucking amazing. Like the groove, the feel, hitting the note perfectly, and just it's just beautiful how he does it. But a lot of people just don't recognize or even think about it. And in the last song, there was a bending note that was really good. I think you probably heard me go, because he like bent quite a bit, and he hit the note perfectly, and it was just tasty. It was tasty. So if there's anything uh, about this in the future, try to listen to guitar players' ability to bend. Because I do think it's like a very important but not really noticed technique of guitar playing that people just miss. And there are some fantastic people at it, John Petrucci being one of them. And there's some people that are just so-so, and then there's some people that are pretty bad at it. So um, I noticed in the last song that one bend was a really good example of good bending. Uh, it was nice. So anyway, um, yeah. Great job. I would say half the songs I really liked, uh, Colin. And we'll go on a playlist. The others I will listen to again, and we'll see if they will, but I'm suspecting they won't. All right, so that leaves us uh, with Tomorrow Night. Who is up for Tomorrow Night? Oh, Michael Herman is up for Tomorrow Night, right? Yes, so Michael Herman, you will have the set on Monday night. Bring your A-game, buddy. I'm... Uh, Looking forward to listening to what you bring us. So have a great Sunday, and uh, we will see you guys tomorrow night. Peace out.